What's going on ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys check out the links in the description below. That's where I put all the tools that I use in this video. Also, you guys were loving the video yesterday that I posted, the one where I talk about my big blue box, the AutoLogic. Let me just make one thing clear. The reason I don't like it very much, it's not because it's not capable, it's because I spent $25,000 on it and I don't use it very much. That's the reason why. And the other stuff I could have lived with if I use it on a daily basis, but I don't. I don't have that many cars that are European, uh, Mercedes and BMW, because I only have those two programs on that, that scanner. Anyways, I just wanna clear that up. For everybody out there that's hating, I even said that in the video, but I guess people don't watch all of it. Anyways, today we're working on the Ford. Funny story on that one. Customer got it stolen. Now the freaking chain's flopping around and it broke the valve cover. I know, crazy. Let me show you. You see the hole? <laughs> it's crazy, right? Well, anyways, yeah, the customer got it stolen. He thinks it's like some homeless dude that stole it because uh, he left the keys inside of it. Uh, he ran into his office. It came, it was coming right out. And the, got, the truck was gone. Crazy. But anyways, we're all, uh, I wanna see if the valves are okay. I'm gonna do a compression test on it, not a, a leak down test on it, and make sure that the valves are not bent. And then if they're not, then we'll replace the tensioners and everything else that went bad. I don't know what happened, but we'll figure it out. Um, I got a galon outside for a check engine light. It's gonna be a good day, boys. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out the rest of my videos, because they're great. I love you guys. My welding hammer broke. <clears throat> All right. Feels like a misfire. I think it's a misfire. Probably is a misfire. You guys hear that squeak? Put some WD-40 and some grease on that hinge. Get that fixed for the customer at no charge, but we are gonna tell the customer that we repaired that. Um, you, when you do little things like that for a customer, you gotta make sure you let them know, hey, by the way, I greased up your hinge because it was squeaking, so every time you open up your door, it was squeaking, right? They go, oh man, thanks so much, that thing was annoying me so much. And that builds trust, and people like that, and you have a returning customer because they know you take care of them. And it took you, what, no time to do that? A little bit WD-40? No big deal. Those are the things that you want to do to build up a good clientele that's loyal to you. Okay. And it is kind of annoying too. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we got a P0301 Surrender 1 misfire and a P0, P0301. All right, so we're gonna go and look at the ignition coil, spark plug, maybe wires. I don't know if this thing has wires, but we're gonna look at that, see what's going on. Tires are low too. Low, low, low. Yeah, this one has the intake covering up some of the spark plugs on the back which is never a good thing. But if we're lucky, I think number one cylinder is this one. And we're gonna be able to switch. Well, this one has wires, I think. I don't know yet. All right. So the intake goes over the rear head. So to get to those spark plugs and those wires and coils or whatever, we're gonna have to remove the intake but I think number one cylinder is over here, which would be a good thing. Somebody asked me if I was ever, uh, have, it, have I ever used one of those paddles? I forgot they're called, but they go, they, you're used, they're used to get waveforms from your ignition coil, right? And they're like a long paddle. I'll put a picture here. It's a long paddle. It looks like a, looks like a back scratcher actually and it hooks up to your scope and it gives you a wave signal by just putting that paddle over the ignition coil. And those things come in, in handy when you're doing um, diagnostic of check engine lights for cars like this where you can't get to the ignition coil. Normally what I would do is take the ignition coils out, switch them for the, with another cylinder, and then see if the check engine light moved. 
But unfortunately, some cars like this one, you can't get to the ignition coils very easily. So you do need something like that to really tell you if the ignition coil is bad or you have a fuel injector problem or if you have a compression problem. You know, because the last thing you would want is to remove the intake, which is going to take about an hour, two hours sometimes. Change the ignition coil, put it all back together, and you still have the same problem, right? So it's, um, it's one of those things where you have to have the right equipment when you're working on certain cars. Excuse me, boys, I just got a text message. <laughs> Anyways, I think so number one, though, is going to be in the front of the car, which is going to be good because it would be easy to reach, which would be good for the customer, too, because it, it won't cost that much money. Hopefully, it's just a coil and it's not like spark plugs. If it's spark plugs, we're going to have to remove the intake. That's going to be a couple hundred bucks. We'll see. Nothing's ever without its trials and tribulations, gentlemen. Unfortunately, this engine, the 3.5 uh, liter Diamante Mitsubishi engine, has number one cylinder right over there, right underneath the intake. Um, so I'm gonna check for spark coming out of the, I think this is a distributor. <laughs> I don't even know. I think it has a distributor. I don't think it has coils. It has wires. So it has uh, six wires, and I think it has a distributor, which is right under there. Right there, right there. And <laughs> if it has a distributor, that's gonna be a fun one. It's always fun to diagnose misfires from a distributor, because you don't know if it's a distributor or not. Um, but either way, well, I'm gonna just check spark coming out of the distributor with a test light. Uh, what you do is you take your test light, you put it on the negative side of the battery cable, and then you take the test light and you put it up against, you remove the wire from the distributor, and you see if you're getting spark coming out of the distributor. Pretty quick and easy. If you're getting spark, then you know it's probably the wire, the spark plug, the injector, or it could be back compression. But at that point, we're gonna have to remove the intake to do that, which sucks because <sighs> I'm gonna have to check everything at that point. I'm gonna have to check compression. I'm gonna have to check, uh, make sure the injector works. I gotta make sure that, um, well, that's it. <laughs> but it's gonna add a couple extra minutes, probably like another hour to my diagnostic time, which sucks. Either way, it's not gonna be a cheap repair because I have to remove this to even get to it. All right, gentlemen, so you get the test light, you put it on the ground side of the battery and make sure that it's still, it's on, everything's good. So you, you just touch the power wire, make sure that's good. And then you get somebody to go inside the car and crank it while you are over here checking for spark. It's gonna be harder to see with the camera, but I'm gonna try to get a picture. If I don't put a picture up or a, a clip of me doing this, then just know that, imagine this is where the cable, the ignition coil cable, or the, just imagine my flashlight is a distributor or the coil, correct? And this is the wire, right? And you remove the wire, then you take your test light and you just don't, you don't touch the coil, you just kind of float it around it. And if there's spark, you'll see the spark jump from the test light to the coil. All right, gentlemen, so unfortunately we are gonna have to remove the intake because the distributor or the coil or whatever that is, is not, it, or it's firing. 
we do have spark coming out of that coil. So we do have an issue either with the wire, either with the spark plug, the injector, or compression. All right, boys, so unfortunately we do have an issue either with the spark plug, the wire, the injector, but we do have, or we have an issue with the compression in the engine. So we are gonna have to call the customer and let them know what's going on. So the way you would sell this is you tell them the best case scenario. Hey, best case scenario, we're gonna have to remove the spark plugs and the wires. This is how much it's gonna cost to do that work. But there's a possibility that we still might have an issue with the fuel delivery system, or we might have a bigger issue with the engine. We won't know until we remove the intake. So I'm hoping for the best, which is just the spark plugs and the wires, but the worst could be this. It's highly unlikely that that's the problem because normally we would have other issues, but there's that possibility and I wanna let you know before we start. I don't wanna let you know like, you know, when we already did the work, have the intake apart, hey, you're gonna need a motor. So I wanna prepare you for that. And the reason why we prepare you for that is because I just don't want you to think that we're trying to rip you off or anything like that. Telling you, hey, we're also gonna need an injector which is gonna be another $200, right? So you wanna just be upfront Tell them everything that's going on, explain to them everything, make sure you, they understand what the intake is, make sure they understand the way the intake is designed to sit above the spark plugs, make sure they know everything, everything. Be very transparent and that'll save you a lot of trouble and a lot of headache later on down the line, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the estimate ready for that and call the customer, let them know what's going on. Um, and then I'm gonna get on this thing and they do a leak down test on all the cylinders and make sure the cylinders are okay make sure that the, the chain breaking didn't uh, cause the valves to stay open and hit the piston. Um, I doubt it. I doubt this engine is interference motor, but there's always a possibility. Anyways, let's get to it. All right, gentlemen. Um, so we got approval on the Mitsubishi. We're going to do plugs, wires, and valve cover gaskets because the valve cover gasket is leaking and since I'm already in there, it's pretty easy to do. Gotta also do the valve cover gasket because I think it's leaking all over the place. Uh, and I'll show you what actually happened. I figured out why the car was misfiring. Thankfully, it wasn't anything crazy. <laughs> oh, and then be and before I get like a full like list of things that I could have done and check ejectors and everything before I took the intake off, Yes, I know I could have done a, a few injector ramp tests and I could have done all kinds of stuff to check the injector before I tore everything apart. But, God damn it, I have to say everything every time. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, the Ranger, so the customer, I told you guys yesterday that the customer, did I tell you guys yesterday? I don't know if I did or not. But somebody stole the truck, ruined the tensioners, the chain came apart and broke the valve cover gasket. Well, the valves hit the pistons, bent them, and now it has no compression because it needs new valves. And the customer said, well, the insurance is going to total it then because I'm not going to put a head job on it. I'm not going to do a head job on it. And I said, okay, that's fine. So the insurance company is going to come and pick that up, and we're not going to do anything to it, but we are getting paid for our diagnostic time, which is always good. Anyways, so what ended up happening with this thing was that, number one, wire was arcing let me get a close-up on right here for you guys okay so you can see all this white soot that is arc which means the cable or the this uh, plastic piece broke causing the spark to um, not go through this insulated tube to the spark plug it was the spark was traveling through here coming out from the side arcing to the head Okay, causing the misfire. You can see the other, the other wires are nice and clean because they're good. I did take off the boot so you can see it better, but these are all nice and clean, black, no issues, but you can see here this is the reason why it was arcing, causing the misfire. So luckily, the customer is only gonna need plugs, wires, and valve cover gaskets. Um, when it comes to these intakes, Mitsubishi's and even Hondas have the same design. Hyundai V6's, like the older style V6 engines that the Hondas used to have. They have the intake going over the, the head, which is a pain in the ass because then you have to remove a whole bunch of hoses, which is not fun. Um, so I try to disconnect as little, I try, to, I try not to disconnect any hoses if I can. 
So on this one, all I did was re remove the throttle body and then take off the intake like that. But I mark everything, I mark all the hoses, make sure I know where they're gonna go because it's always a pain in the ass trying to figure out where the hoses go, especially when they're EVAP, EVAP hoses, EVAP vacuum lines. The customer won't have a check engine line for a couple of days and then they, if you put it in the wrong place and you're gonna get a check engine line, they're gonna come back, blah, 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 blah. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna keep going on that, waiting for the parts, I'll see you guys later.